Good morning, folks. It's a fun space news day, not such a fun weather day. And the incoming umbral magnetic fields we saw days ago have now crept onto the Earth-facing disk on the north. Let's start there over at spaceweathernews.com, but begin with yesterday's filament snap and CME. Soho, so faint it's not worth showing the burst, but it does appear that NOAA has put it on their endless spiral anyway. Set to impact Earth in about two days, not very strong, but what you will notice as we run through it is the denser yellow and green bulge at the north end of the CME on the right side. That's what we saw yesterday as most of the ejecta was heading north in the red 304 images, up and away. However, NOAA also agrees with the analysis of the pink 211 angstrom images that a wide blast cleared the corona and we could see some effects in the solar wind. Again, they'll be minor. Anyway, back to today, before discussing the Earth-facing coronal hole, top left, there's the bright umbral magnetic fields incoming. We eyed those two days ago, and now the sunspot anchors for those looping arches are in view of Earth. Pretty impressive looking. Despite the two larger umbra, my eyes are actually set behind them in the mishmash of spots which might contain complex magnetism. If it does, however, it's not showing it yet, still not much doing on the X-ray flux, no solar flares. Meanwhile, the solar wind may be calming down just a bit. Purple, the speed is dropping out and the instability from this event is over. But another one is coming. That Earth-facing opening will have its solar wind here midweek. But until then, it does ramp the earthquake watch. You remember we broke down South America yesterday, shifting the alert northward. But three shallow events in central Chile all fell south of the alert. Didn't matter. The bulk of the red zone kept shifting northward, as that's what the signal said. And the largest quake of the last day struck that area. Not too big and certainly not deadly, but noteworthy. We're moving on to the top stories, including a NASA scientist asking for a revision of planetary definitions, especially since it's tailored to our own system. Stern's suggestions would make the Earth's moon a planet, along with Pluto, for whom we are all rooting. Then, in astrobiology, scientists from Caltech successfully created an organic carbon-silicon bond, and nature's got a few years' head start on them, wouldn't you say? If they can do it in the lab, the universe can make silicon-based life forms, and now I really want to expand the definition of a planet, and a habitable one at that. Fun as that was, it's time for seriousness. A preposterous rain event struck southern Spain yesterday. The atmosphere completely unleashed on the region, causing landslides and flash floods and washouts, also claiming lives. As we come to a video taken during the worst part of the storm, you cannot help but marvel at the power being let down from the skies. This guy's actually lucky to have found that safe little spot to film. Don't forget, folks, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is available just about anywhere. Thanks for the kind emails on that, by the way. Also, the Disaster Prediction app, Earthquake alert maps post there first, and the automatic and observer's alerts come through there as well. We've got pressure and radar forecasts, a null school global run, and shots of our star to close. California and south central United States, geez, you guys really got to pay attention tonight. The sky is eyeing you. It's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.